Hey, what's going on tech enthusiasts, Bo HD here. I hope you guys are doing well. You're watching Last Week in Tech, the show where we talk about all the top tech news stories from last week, this week. I'm sorry I missed last week. I had strep throat, which kind of put me out of commission, but uh, I was put aboard the antibiotic train and seven days later, I'm feeling great. So thumbs up for modern medicine. As always, you can send in your tech news story suggestions using the LWIT hashtag on Twitter, but uh, let's just jump right into it. Now, last week, the web was talking about the potential S Pen, Samsung S Pen hardware flaw, where if you put the S Pen in backwards on the Samsung Galaxy Note 5, it has the potential to get stuck and break the sensor built into the S Pen holster. Many people were claiming it to be a design flaw. Some people said it's just a user error. I mean, why would you put the S Pen in backwards in the first place? And I completely agree. It's really not that hard to understand that you put the S Pen in tip first, because if you put it in backwards, it's just gonna break. But as millions of these devices ship out to people across the world, I mean, it's pretty understandable to think that, yeah, some people are not going to follow these instructions. They're not gonna read the manual they're probably going to accidentally put the S Pen in backwards, whether they're drunk, whether they're just stupid, whether you give it to a kid or something, it's just going to happen. In previous versions of the Note, you simply could not insert the S Pen in backwards or upside down, it just wouldn't work, it just wouldn't allow you to do that. And so I think when you look at previous versions of the Note, I think the Note 5 does indeed have a slight design flaw. Now, is it a big enough deal for the devices to be recalled and fixed? No, I think that uh, you know you make the, this mistake once and you're gonna learn and you're not gonna do it again. Samsung was well aware of the problem before devices started shipping out. It was noted in the manual. So if you read the manual, it says do not insert the S button backwards. So there's that, but uh, there is also a fix out there. So if you insert like a very uh, thin piece of paper into the S Pen cradle, um, and kind of wiggle the S Pen out, you can actually pull it out without damaging the sensor. So that's very good news. Moral of the story, don't insert the S Pen in backwards. You might be curious, you might be slightly inebriated, but don't do it. But Samsung can never seem to catch a break these days. They've been struggling to find success in the market. It was reported that Samsung has lost $44 billion of value in its worst streak since 1983. Ouch. There's no question the smartphone industry is a tough industry to be in, especially for companies like Samsung, LG, and Motorola, who all rely on Google's operating system, Google's Android operating system. Um, in order for Android smartphones to really differentiate themselves from each other, it all just comes down to a few features, whether they're big or small. Whether a smartphone has a leather back cover or a plastic back cover or good battery life or terrible battery life, the success of each device really hinges on these uh, rather small select features. And because Samsung's profit margins are so small, they're at 12% compared to Apple's profit margins, of 28%, they need to sell a lot of devices to make profit. So I don't think they're declining because they're making poor devices. The Galaxy Note 5 is one of the best smartphones I've ever used. They're declining really because the smartphone industry is just very competitive right now. There are many devices out there. 2015 has been a great year for budget devices in particular. Um, and in general, there are just a lot of options for consumers. If you're following me on Google+, thank you, but hopefully you noticed the post that I shared about Android Marshmallow's many features. All credit goes to Salman Ahmad for creating the original post where he detailed all of the big, notable, and minor improvements of Android M. The list is very long. I'll leave a link to check out all the features of Android M down below in the description bar, but some of the big improvements include Now on Tap, Permissions Management, Android Pay, Doze, and app standby. It's really an impressive list that really justifies the significant letter upgrade from Android Lollipop to Android 6.0 Marshmallow. The Moto X Pure Edition, or the Moto X style, depending on where you live, is Motorola's upcoming flagship smartphone that costs just $400 off contract, and it is now available for pre-order. The device features a Snapdragon 808 hexa-core processor with three gigabytes of RAM, a 21 megapixel camera sensor, 5.7 inch QHD display, front-facing speakers, it looks like a great device overall. I've already pre-ordered the device to review, so make sure to follow me here on youtube.com slash bohd or on Twitter, and I will be sure to kind of update you guys with coverage. Another exciting news, Android Wear is now officially available on iOS devices. While it doesn't officially work with older smartwatches like the Moto 360 or the LG G Watch R, many people have been able to connect these older smartwatches without any problems. Google has said that Android Wear for iOS will work officially with the LG Watcher Bane and all future smartwatches, including those from Huawei, Asus, 
and Motorola. But this is great news. I really love Android Wear because it's simple and it gives the user options. And I love options. If I don't like the appearance of say the LG G Watch R, I can switch to the Moto 360 or the Asus Zen Watch or even the upcoming Huawei Watch which looks freaking beautiful. When can we have a release date? I would really like to have a release date so I can buy that thing because it looks beautiful. But uh, I just want to say thanks Google for making an Android Wear app for iOS. Thanks for having it be official now. And you know, thanks Apple for accepting it into your ecosystem. With that said, Google continues to be in the news most recently for unveiling a fresh new logo. It's basically a revamped font that is more bold, modern, and just a lot more simple and kind of less fancy. This is it right here. So let me know your thoughts on the logo, the new fresh design. Do you like the looks of it or do you prefer the old design? Let me know in a comment down below. The Nexus 5 leaked some juicy specs last week. Some of the rumored specs of the new LG Nexus 5 include a Snapdragon 808 hexa-core processor with three gigabytes of RAM, 1080p display, 2700 milliamp battery, USB Type-C, and a 12.3 megapixel rear-facing camera sensor with a 5 megapixel front-facing camera sensor. The specs are solid, and while they aren't the absolute top-of-the-line specs, they should be able to run stock Android flawlessly without any sort of problems, and best of all, the price of the device overall off contract should be right around $300, I'm guessing, which is awesome. But the new LG Nexus 5 isn't the only Android device being leaked like a leaky faucet. The BlackBerry Venice has had many leaked images. In the leaked pictures, we appear to have a BlackBerry with a physical keyboard, of course. You know, BlackBerry has to have those physical keyboards. And it appears to be running a very stock version of Android Lollipop. There's a fat speaker grill on the bottom and a micro SD card and SIM card slot up top. Now, I'm not much of a BlackBerry user only because I've just never really used a BlackBerry device as a daily driver. But uh, I'm really curious about the device and I might get my hands on one if it becomes official. Chances are it will be official here very soon, just based off the number of leaked images. But I wanted to end today's show with a reminder of a couple upcoming events. IFA Berlin starts this Friday and we should see a lot of new mobile gadgets, including details about the upcoming Samsung Gear S2 smartwatch. It'll go through September 9th, so just prepare yourself, prepare your sub boxes, because there should be a lot of coverage coming your way. I'm really excited for it. The new 2015 Moto 360 will be officially announced on September 8th, so stay tuned for that. Before the next episode of Last Week in Tech, the new Moto 360 second gen will be officially announced. We've seen a lot of leaked images of the device, so it's not much of a secret anymore, but uh, I really do want to know the price and the availability because I really want one. With that said, guys, thank you so much for watching Last Week in Tech. If you guys want to be included in next week's episode, send in your tech news story suggestions to Twitter using the Last Week in Tech hashtag. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. It really does help show your support. Maybe hit that subscribe button if you're brand new. I would love to see your face in next week's episode in the comment section, of course. So hit that subscribe button if you're brand new. As always, I'm Bo HD. Thank you for watching, and I will see you right back here in the next one. Side note, I do have some reviews coming in the next week or two that I will just kind of sprinkle into the sub box for you. So uh, stay tuned for that. But uh, I'll talk to you guys very soon in the next one. See ya.